about the the, the Marines yep. that are looking to transition out of the military. How dare they? There is there is something that is called a capstone Shame. interview. And they need to do the capstone interview before. This is something that gets done with your company commander. Can you tell us what the capstone interview yes. is, basically? So a capstone interview, in reality, what a, I'm going to tell you what the current definition of a capstone interview is. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good program that's being badly implemented. Sure. So the capstone interview right now is just simply a little piece of paper that it really dictates on if you have a good leader or not, that he will actually sit down and care enough with you to have a more than a five minute conversation with on what are your plans and what are you doing right now in order for you to gain employment outside employment, housing, or basically what are your plans going to be once you decide to transition? Out? So the capstone interview is to make sure you got a plan, make sure that you have a plan and that you are taking steps to those to that so plan. you have a plan of action the, exactly so again good program great program but badly executed it's only as good as the leaders that execute it exactly and and and, and again i i don't think I, how do we fix that though right like like how do we fix that how do you fix give a damn and that's 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 the million dollar question that's the million dollar question because remember like you said hey you're getting out dog I'm not going to send you on deployment. You're getting out. I'm not going to send you to school. You're getting out. I'm not going to send you for this qualification, certification. You're getting out. You know, this goes to one of the topics that we wanted to talk about this podcast, but I don't know if we're going to have enough time in order for us to talk about it. It's, I don't know if you felt that way. I felt that way whenever yeah. I was a staff sergeant. It gets to a point in our careers that we, I felt that, oh, well, all that these people care about is the opinions of the PFC all the way up to corporal, maybe even sergeant. Mm. And the opinion, no, not really the opinion, but nobody, welfare? no, the welfare and me mental welfare of the staff NCOs. I don't remember when nobody, when my, you know, OIC or my master sergeant went up to me and was like, truly asked me, Hey man, how are you doing? How are you? How is Albert doing? I don't remember the last time. I don't. I, I quite honestly cannot put it together. And I'm gonna tell you this. I wanted to. I wanted to send you this picture too, and I didn't. And I never served with this uh, young man, First Sergeant Floor, First Sergeant. who was in the Special Operations Community for a long time. Married with two kids, uh, took his life mm. a few months ago. Oh man. And here you are bringing this up. And I'll tell you, I remember one Marine in particular getting out. And it was Sergeant Major Scott Helms. And he was the MCI West Sergeant Major. They worked this guy till the very last day. Hmm. Oh, man. Don't, let's, uh, let's so, so you there. know, that's a trait. That's a trait. As, as, as a young Marine, We both have our own benefits. As a younger Marine, we're going to, most of the time, afford you the opportunity to transition, yep. have time, go to skill bridge. Scott didn't have that. Yep. I remember asking him. I was a first sergeant at the time. Like, how are you? You know, like you just said. Yeah. You know what he told me? I'm scared. Yep. That scared me. Mm -hmm. Like, as a, as a, I had several years in grade as a first sergeant i'm thinking like what yeah you know scared because mm. they work you till the last day because yeah. because nobody yeah, that, that's, that's why a lot of people don't that that's the reality that a lot of people don't see and the, that's the thing right we have our e1 to e5 dilemma and then we have our e6 to yeah. to e9 dilemma and they're different I know, I know plenty of master sergeants master gunnies that Literally, he's like, eh, so I've talked to them. Hey, so what are you doing for skill bridge, Master Guns or Master Arn? Oh, I'm not taking skill bridge. I can't because the CEO wanna, was not going to approve it because I need to be here. Now, how do we fix that? I think that we need to show that we care. Mm -hmm. Like, true. Like I'm talking about officer from officer to, you know, first sergeant that they truly are. And how do you show that you care? you continue to educate them. Because what education is there really? 
None. Towards to besides the the professional military education that's just that's just a check in the box, kind of like the 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 capstone, right? How do we truly care? We truly educate them on on more things. We show them that we care about their progression. We show it's them more than that, programs. bro. It's more than that, and I'm gonna tell you why, man. Because my care, when my care enter uh, is in conflict with mission requirements, one of them's gonna give way. Well, and what do you mean by mission requirement? We are the mission to you. No, we are the mission. I period. agree with you. I agree with you, but here's what I'm saying. I want my master guns to go to skill bridge until, right up until there's a phase mo inspection coming around and I need that guy mm. or we're going to fail. And I can yeah. get fired. Well, that, that's that, what happens. But that's a lot I'm not saying I never did that, but I've seen that stuff. But that's and that's I'm just saying that's the reality is that there is an extreme, like I said, man, for some of those, because here's the deal. If you were a master guns, even as a gunny, bro, you're not going to go to skill bridge unless unless you either have that like drive or one of your leaders goes, Albert, it's do you need to go, dog? Yeah. Well, not in my okay. case. I want to. You, you need. Go. But I'm just saying whatever it is. Right. Hey, Albert, you need to go, dog. Okay? Get, go sign up. Like, I know this is something that you're interested in. You need to go do it. Otherwise, what's Albert going to be feeling a lot of times? Obligated to the mission, to the unit, to the to your leaders, to your Marines. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to be like, I can't, man. because That's, people that's are gonna... where the resentment starts, too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to, nobody cared about me. Fuck it. Yeah. Like, you know, now it's my time. And, you know, and I was like, now well, it's my time. That's not to take away from the people who have been, I'm retiring for the last, like, three or four years. Yeah, and, like they're, You know, or I the know. young Marine who's, I'm getting out for, like, the last year, year and a half of their contract. Because you know what I think that this is going to do, the trigger the trigger effect? The more that we show that we care about the staff and CEOs that are the ones that shape the force. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say drive the force. They, mm -hmm. I think the staff and CEO, they shape the force. And then whenever we show that, problems like, for example... Barracks, because everyone's always talking about the barracks and barracks oh conditions. As a matter of fact, Jaime, do you have the do you have the the clip uh, that I showed you about the the barracks conditions? That that is the clip that I showed you from Military Times. Okay, so here we have this uh, our document or this article that came out in Military Times about the conditions, and this doesn't really specify, if I'm not mistaken, where these barracks are taking place. But this is all around. Pretty much the like the military. Marines are complaining about the barracks conditions. So mm -hmm. how do we how do we make it better? First of all, we educate the staff and CEOs are shaping the force, show them that we actually care because the more that we show that we care about those staff and CEOs, the more that they are in turn going to care about those Marines that mm -hmm. are living in those poor barracks conditions. And then you guys can can look this article up by yourself. Again, it's in the military times uh, uh, that was pulled. And what's going to happen is we need to come up with realistic expectations of what this actually means to our Marines. Mm. What do I mean by that? Okay, fine. We are expected the 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 actual barracks were built. Fine. Hey, 111. Hey, first supply. You got them. They're yours. You got to take care of the grills. You got to take care of the outside. You got to take care of this and this and that. And then that's when we find Marines that join as a 0311 or as a 3152 or as a 35 something mortar T becoming gardeners. It's like, man, like, what the hell am I doing pulling weeds out of this? Shouldn't we have different people? Is there not a more efficient time? So what happens is that they don't put those things in the budget. My suggestion is, listen. For the barracks that are already built, how about we start developing a budget to actually take care of the amenities that our Marines are using? There's mm. an excuse of our Marines of trashing their the amenities, but we need to make sure that we establish better conditions for our service members that are living in those barracks. Oh man, this is a deep topic. This is because I got an issue. I got issues on both sides, man. Because now we got these we got these pages out here, dude. I'll never forget. When there was a legit who can party harder competition in the Marine Corps, bro, they were trash in the barracks. We know how we know what Marines do in the barracks because we both lived in them. We trash them. 
Why do we have field day? Marines are sitting here going, oh, it's so Sergeant Major can come through and just mess with me, and I'm an adult. Okay, well, that's not what TikTok says. TikTok says you're over here taping dudes up in between two mattresses, throwing them off the second catwalk, starting dumpster fires, and freaking slinging, you know, feces all over the place. But that's not everybody, though. It's not everybody, but that's how a lot of people get down. Right? So, one, why do we have field day? Okay, because the barracks are multi-million dollar structures. Do we legitimately think that barracks would last longer if we never cleaned them and, and inspected them or if we did clean them and inspect them? I Don't get me wrong. I think that should still need – that should still be field day. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I think that should 100% still field day, inspections, all that stuff. In the individual Marines room. Yeah. There should be a company out there that if that should take care of the basketball courts that should take care of like the you over, mean like civilians? The, yeah, civilians. Yes. Some 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 do it. Some do do that, but not all. And then there's certain, you know, a lot of it does get contracted because I was with Marine Corps base, and so it's like I don't I forget what it is like some distance from the barracks like this this amount of distance from the barracks like that's the unit's responsibility kind of thing. Here's what I'm going to tell you guys that nobody wants to hear. You touched on it. It's the money. Okay, I've been in Milcon project meetings. Okay, so you mean to tell me, and I know you don't feel this way, Albert, but you mean to tell me Marine Corps whoever it. You got all this money to put this nice big hospital up at the front gate. Of, why do you think that that was? Why do you think there's a huge PX and a beautiful naval hospital right where you can see it from I-5? Because they ain't stupid and that's good marketing. No, 100%. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it ain't about not having Well, the, the barracks are nice. Like, the barracks are nice. Some of them no, are. No, no, no. I think. Not I think in Horno. Be, be, they still got yeah, flat tops. Yeah, yeah. Horno. Uh, what I would say, Horno 43 area. Because they get no love, dog. You know why? Because you can't see them from the five. And, you're and supposed those are, to be those are our, uh, those are our gardeners. Those are the people that are doing the gardening. But if you go into some of these, it, to some of these. Uh, uh, They're living in terrible conditions. But. Even with, even in the nice ones, let's say the ones in Del Mar, the ones that are like right by the beach, by the by the, they have super nice amenities. Yes, guess they who do. uses guess who uses those amenities? No one, because they don't use those amenities. Because first of all, the TVs that they put in there, nobody knows how to operate them. Yeah, they have a bunch of stuff that is completely outdated. They just put it there in like two thousand and. So here's what Marines got to understand: and every time there was a command climate survey done, every single one. Every single time, Marines complain about the barracks. From a command perspective, it begins to sound like white noise. It's just noise, right? That's one. Okay. Number two, if you guys didn't know, if whatever unit you're in, unless you're legitimately with installations command, the, your unit doesn't have any control on what happens in the barracks as far as repairs and things like that one thing that's hard for marines and i always used to tell them this you were supply okay we got a little thing called supply and demand so when marines do not submit service requests yeah. guess what you're telling everybody in the marine corps our barracks is perfect but you and me lance corporals we're not going to submit it. Why? They ain't going to fix it. I'm going to put, uh, 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 Jaime, we need the, the BS. I'm going to call BS on that. Let me tell you why. Okay. The Marine Corps has gotten really good. The units, the sections have gotten really good at that. Yep. What they do now is, you know how you were saying about the barracks policy yep, and all yep, that stuff? Yep. So what they have is a QR code mm -hmm. in their door. And they scan that QR code and it sends them to the the request that they need to fill out. It also sends is this the, like, everybody the or just? Policy. Well, this is First Supply Battalion. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. The, hey, kudos to First Supply Battalion because I know I know that people are doing this and they actually have an innovation section. Sure. That this is where they came out with. They they go to the sections, they go to the barracks, and they say like, hey, well, how can we assist you to innovate this stuff? So shout out to First Supply Battalion because you guys are doing great. At, at, you guys are doing great at that. Now. I, and I and I know that a couple other units are also doing the QR codes. Sure. QR codes are are like all over the place. But now the problem is, because that was that was what people used to. Well, 
back when you were still in, that was, oh, well, if we don't know what we can't fix, or we can't fix what we don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now you know about it. You know what the problem is? The same problem that I'm telling you that is going to explode because of the recruiting crisis. The recruiting crisis. Yeah, but I'm just... Oh, we don't have enough people to do those work requests. And then now, if you want your freaking light bulb change or your AC fix, you have to wait seven freaking months. Well, here, okay. Here's the issue with that. I agree with you. But I'm Sergeant Major so-and-so from whatever unit with my CO. Okay? The barracks falls under the installation, which is not even in my chain of command. In the military, it's got to be in your chain of command, right? So you, I would have COs and I'd be getting into it with, with people from installation. And they're just like, you can't make me basically do my job. Like, I don't work for you. Yeah. And so you get this. And why is it hard for you as the leader? Because you're the ones got to go back to your Marines. The Marines are thinking... Sergeant Major, CO, why aren't you guys fixing the barracks? True. And, and, and you're not going to be unprofessional yeah. and go back and go and blame it on installations. True. Yes. Right? You're not going to do that. Right? Yeah. You're going to go back and you're going to try to carry the water for the team, which includes installations, and go, hey, guys, make sure that you're – because it's still – it's the same. If you don't report the, the, the discrepancies, you are sending the signal to hire. There's no problems. How do we equip our commanders and command deck, essentially? Because the EXOs are very involved in this as well. How do we equip our commanders, EXOs, sergeant majors, in order for them to to fight better against the insulin? Like, I've seen that. You make, you, up your freaking, right. you make up your freaking mind. Because when I was behind closed doors, I'd be in there like, I'm a sergeant major. I ain't a freaking barracks manager, dog. And if you want me to have control over the barracks, then give me control. We'll make some stuff happen straight up. But you're all over here trying to make me – because when it, you're in a unit, who's in charge of the barracks? It's a sergeant major. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. And I'm – and then and then we go into these meetings talking about rooms and discrepancies and this and that. And I'm sitting there like, I'm not a barracks manager. I'm not, dude. And if you want me to wear that hat, give me more authority over that facility. Who do you think should be or, the barracks manager? What rank do you think the barracks manager position should fall, should fall under? I mean, I've seen Marines do it that were all different ranks. I think it should be somebody who wants to do it. Some, I think I, somebody that wants to do it. The value of putting it. someone in a job that wants to do that job yes. cannot be overstated. Uh, I think you're completely right. It should be, regardless of what the rank is, it should be a Marines that wants to do it and a Marine that lives in the barracks. Because It I, depends on the community though, right? No, I, I, no. I, I think that's 100%, a, I think dude. the hard pass. Put a Lance Crubble as a barracks manager and the grunts. I think that he's going to be getting his, you know, what pushed in. I understand that. But here is the thing, though. He, if he lives in those barracks, he knows what needs to happen. And mm -hmm. then I think it should be a good push if the, you know, battery gunny or the first sergeant or anybody is pulls everyone around because obviously this is a priority for the sergeant major. Yep. He's like, y'all don't give shit to this Lance Corporal. Mm -hmm. This Lance Corporal, listen here, Staff Sergeant, listen here, Sergeant, listen here, Corporal. This guy is authorized to come directly to me mm -hmm. if y'all give him any shit. How do you feel about that, though? I just don't think it would work. That, that's what well, I mean. Because you're putting the Lance, the Lance Corporal, he's looking at. He's looking at you, and he's looking at those NCOs well, I mean, like y'all you, like trying you to get me. Them. You y'all really trying you, to get me you killed out here. Them. What do we do with the CGs driver? We screen them, right? Like you yeah. do the same thing with the barracks manager. I think the barracks manager is an equal, important position at those positions that you're putting those those Lance Corporals. And there's very capable Lance Corporals out there. Here's here is is the best um, analogy that I can come up with. Okay, for for this, right? It's just like with medical. Marines do not understand how medical works. OK, your medical officer, they got to answer to your commanding officer. They do. So when you can't get that MRI, you're not getting the treatment that you want. You should take it up your chain of command and, until it gets to your CO. Because your CO can put their freaking thumb on the, the medical officer and go, hey. What the hell is going on here? Mm -hmm. And guess what's going to happen really quickly? Action. Yep. Action will be taken, but we lose faith and I don't want to get into the medical side of it, but that's the best analogy. There needs to be, when we're talking about the barracks, a way for the CO and that, that command team where those Marines 
the unit they're in and the barracks they live in to have a certain level of authority over it. Because right now, you're just like bystanders. You have no authority. You have no say. When I was in Miramar, dude, there's some, because the civilians still run it because it was a Navy base. Mm. Do you got some civilian over there named freaking Mark who's like, yeah, whatever. Flicks a cigarette off your chest. Like, he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't, he's a contractor, dude. Do yeah. you think he really yeah. Yeah. cares? He's that, not invested. He's not invested. Do you think he cares the Sergeant Major is mad? No. As a matter of fact, he probably got contracted. He got out after four years. He's he laughing got, at you. He got contracted, you know, after four years, and he's now he's working for that company, and he's been waiting to. But the tell Marine, that shit to but the, the sergeant major and the CEO <laughs> got to ride that as far as the reputation goes on the command and cli command climate survey, because you and me and every other junior Marine are like they don't care. Yeah, I think I think this is a very good topic of conversation that we need to keep uh, that we need to keep having. Let us know what you guys think of your in the comments. What has been your experience living in the barracks? Because what ends up happening, I think we should be talking about in the next podcast is okay. Well, you know what that leads to a lot of <clears throat> Marines getting married at the wrong age and at the wrong time. Contract marriages mo moving out. Say it ain't so. Uh, going either to base housing, which I think they're paying way too much for. Do we marry women in the adult entertainment industry? <laughs> and, and we're about to find out. But this has concluded today's podcast. Make sure that you guys go right here to watch more content and to watch the playlist of the A to B podcast where we talk about a lot of exciting stuff. Barry, where can people find you? At Bull5277 on Instagram, at Bull52772 on TikTok. You know the deal. Smash that follow button. Hit the link in my bio. The call is free. The change lasts. Make sure that you guys follow and subscribe to keep supporting the A to B podcast. I'll see you guys in the next one.